I don't know. It's just so that's yeah, that's it. I'm sorry, I'm, talk, I'm talking too much. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's it. this is this is when this is how we voice it out because yeah. we have we have this thing where we're going through something and everybody nobody wants to talk about it, you know. So I feel like the more we talk about it, the more it, it gets better. It helps us psychologically to understand mm -hmm. that we're all observing these problems, you know, and we have to I agree. stay together and talk about these problems. And um, I was I was seeing something the other day. Someone said that do do we think the government is giving us accurate information? Should we believe everything we're told? The I, the thing is. At a federal level, there's a lot of, um, they're not really organizing things well because of lack of resources and infrastructure. Um, you know, the lack of technological advances in this country is a huge deterrent because you can't really track a lot of things um, efficiently. So, um, and even the lack of tests, I mean, I know that they, Jack Ma gave 1 million tests to Nigeria, but as soon as it came in, that was the last we heard about it. I don't know where those tests went. They took them straight to Abuja. Shouldn't have done that because Lagos is the epicenter of this thing. But um, I think there are not enough tests to adequately test everybody around. I think there's also a, a level of ignorance where people don't understand what's actually happening. Because we're all assuming that because we have access to television, internet, and newspapers and we can read, that, we, that everybody knows, knows what's going on. Nigeria currently has the highest number of children out of school. There's 13.2 million kids out of school which means that 13.2 barely literate children or adults out there, at least. So there's a wide number of the population that doesn't even know what's going on. So um, they might think, oh, I just have a regular cold, or maybe, oh, I'm not feeling well, and they'll just like go ahead and just do, do what they're doing, and they'll end up spreading the disease. But they wouldn't know to call the NCDC to be like, oh, I have the symptoms that are similar to COVID-19, because they don't know what COVID-19 is. So yeah. The, the number is higher because there's not enough tests. There's also lack of education. Um, and there's also going to be like, all it takes is one person in a densely populated community to get it. I've always started saying, if, if, if this thing goes to Mushin, if it goes to Avalende, if it goes to Ajigunle, or a place where, or Makoko, Plus social distancing is not possible. So everybody's going to get it. You know, so, so, so that's why, and it's a scary thing to think about, but it is what it is. So I don't think that trying to, lower the number on on purpose the thing is testing is taking a longer time than it needs to a and there are not enough tests b and c there's not enough education for people to even know what they're testing for or to know what to call for and even with that some the ncdc is not picking up all the calls because some people in our country think it's a funny thing to call the ncdc and have and do prank calls I don't get yeah. that. Like, I, I'm just That's like, are you guys joking? Like, this, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Every single time you call the NCDC and you don't have an actual um, issue, then it's going to take away from somebody that was trying to call them and actually has symptoms. So it's, just, it's, 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 it's a hot mess, but I am optimistic. Um, I, do, I do believe to a certain degree that, you know, we might have had it longer than we, we might have been aware of. And um, maybe that's maybe a good thing, or maybe it's not, I'm not sure. But I do think that we've probably had it longer than we, than, we, than, we, than we realize. So hopefully that has to come for something. And maybe that's why there's more people discharged than deaths and stuff like that. So let's see. Let's see how it goes. And, and why do you think that is? Because in, in the United States of America and um, in Italy, in so many other countries, I feel like the deaths are are so much, you know, it's, it's uncontrollable. Why do you think it's not the same here? Or, or do you think it's just, we, do you think it's like a, a gradual thing? Or why do you think we don't have so many I, deaths? Because we're at 442 with 100. Right, with um, about 30, 12 deaths. 13 deaths, why do you think? Okay, so let me, I'm not a scientist, so I don't want to, you know, speak out of um, my sphere of, you know, knowledge and I'm, I watch my closet, but I have a couple of theories. Um, the first being that, like, we had enough time to kind of see what, what happened in Wuhan and what happened in America to kind of, like, put our travel measures in place quicker than they did. So, like, yeah. we, banned, we banned travel quicker than most countries did already. I mean, not most countries, but like most of the affected countries, because they, they didn't really know what was going on. So we knew that, oh, this is finally goes to Nigeria, cut everything down now. 
that didn't help that much, but at least it helped to some extent. Um, I also believe that the places where there's a lot of um, uh, people like in America and Italy and all of that, these climates are were cold.